in the name of the living and loving God, who is Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Well, happy Mother's Day to all of you who are mothers and to all of you who mother and have mothered and will mother. It's an important day. And I want to make, it seems like these Sundays fall on my road, on my time. I want to make a connection between Mother's Day and this day, the Sunday between Ascension Day and Pentecost Day. So... A little something about my mother. My mother lived until she was 101. She died um, seven years ago. And um, she had these sayings, these sayings that our family really treasured. Um, and I want to share three of them with you. I can't remember whether I've done this before or not, but you know, it's in my bones and I want to share them with you. So one of them is this. Keep your foot on the rock. And she would say this, um, you know, when we were sort of worried about something that was going on or not quite sure what might happen. She says, well, keep your foot on the rock. And at that moment, she didn't explain what the rock was, but we knew. We knew the rocks on which she stood. And what was family? Family was very important to her. We were living in the town in which she grew up. She knew loads of people in that town. And Loads of family members were there, and um, she treasured family relationships. Another, another rock, another cornerstone of that rock was faith. She grew up a very active and committed Methodist, and when she married my father, she became an Episcopalian with him, and, and they both, as a matter of fact, were very active in this small Episcopal church in South Carolina. It was important. And this is a strange thing. I was just thinking about this, is that I remember my mother when I was a teenager asking me about the sermon. You know, what, what, what do you think about the sermon? And I, I only remember her asking me questions, not telling me what was being said, but I thought that was pretty neat the more I reflect on that. A third cornerstone for my mother was learning. She was a teacher before she got married, and um, she was a lifelong learner, uh, so much so that in her 60s and 70s, she started uh, watercoloring and was pretty good and, uh, and writing short stories. I mean, which led to the fourth cornerstone, which is she was creative. She was a typical Southern lady, but she was creative in the way she arranged our home and, and entertained and, and um, sort of carried out her life. Keep your foot on the rock. Another motherism was this. Um, no, thank you. I've had a sufficiency. And again, she was a, she was a nice southern lady. And um, especially at, at big meals, um, you know, when we're passing around seconds for uh, fried chicken or turkey or whatever. Mother, would you like some more turkey? No, thank you, dear. I've had a sufficiency which to this day I think is a fantastic statement. I didn't ever use that word sufficiency for any other time in my life until, until I really started thinking about the, the theology of stewardship. You know, we have enough, we have enough, so let's live with enough. That whole thing of sufficiency is a, an important theological concept. And uh, she's the one that started me thinking about that. And the last one that we keep saying it's funny how every time we say this to our sibling, you know, we sort, of, we sort of chuckle. If you set a date, it will come. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you set a date, it will come. But she would use it like, um, oh, I wish Christmas would get here pretty soon. So, yeah, I'm, I want Christmas to come right now. Well, honey, if you set a date, it will come. <laughs> or I don't know what I'm going to do about this high school term paper, I don't, it's, it's, you know, it's due in about four days. Well, if you set a date, it will come. <laughs> my point is this, so on this Mother's Day, as I remember my mother, she taught me a lot about where I came from, 
how to live my life in the present, whether it was a small child or adolescent or an adult, and something about working towards the future. And I really appreciate that. So here's the connection to this day. This day, this day also is sort of focusing on what is in our faith, in our faith family, on what is with Jesus, with what happened in the past, where those apostles are in the present, and what might be coming down the pike really soon. Did you hear those words in the Collect of the Day? O God, King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with a great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. In other words, on Ascension Day, that 40th day after Easter, that's when God glorified Jesus, and Jesus ascended into heaven. Do not leave us comfortless. Did you hear that phrase right there? Okay, Jesus Christ has risen into the clouds. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us in the future, in the future. And for us, that will be next Sunday, Pentecost Day. So right now, we're sort of looking at what happened recently, what's going on right now, and what's going to come in a week. And it's a very interesting exercise to sort of put us in the position of those apostles to see what they felt, what they were thinking, and, and what they did. Of course, as you well know, that is the ascension window. And that's a typical um, depiction of the ascension where Jesus was, uh, was, was, had two men dressed in white and uh, was ascending into the clouds in glory to be with the Father in heaven. And uh, if you look at art throughout the ages, sometimes there are a lot of people gathered around that scene. Uh, sometimes uh, Mary is, uh, is a part of it as well. But it's one of celebration and one of glorification. Uh, because that was, a, that was a significant event. And it is a major feast day in the church. And it's too bad we can't celebrate it. Of course, our choir celebrated it uh, with an even song with St. Stephen's over... Uh, over this past week at, on, on Ascension Day, which was fantastic. Um, but the next part, do not leave us comfortless. That's where we need, that's where we need to go, what, what, what we need to think about. Because there were those disciples who had been told to go back to that upper room, that safe place, and pray. Jesus Christ had left them. And think about what they'd gone through. Jesus had been with them, teaching them, healing them, changing their lives. They loved Jesus. Jesus loved them. And he was killed. And he went away. And he came back. Jesus Christ, the risen Christ, so he didn't really go away. He was back in another form. But now he has left again. I mean, just think about that whiplash effect on those apostles who had, who had staked their future being with this person, Jesus Christ. And now he really was gone up into the skies. Even though this is the primary depiction of of the ascension, uh, there are others, uh, which I think are, are, are interesting. There's one, and I've only seen two examples of it, but it was in the late Middle Ages, the, the ones that I've seen, is you don't see these people there. All you see is right up at the top of the window are two feet. <laughs> two feet and a cloud. In other words, it's not glorifying anything. It, well, well, the cloud is there. The presence of God is there. But the two feet, only the two feet of Jesus Christ are left. And when you look at that picture, you really get a sense of how those apostles felt, I think. Like, he's really gone this time. 
two feet, nothing. So they stayed in that room, and come Pentecost Day, it all changed because the Holy Spirit came, spoke to them, allowed them to speak, others to hear, and the church was born. But the interesting thing, the interesting thing about this is that the, a pattern is set. You see the past, the present, and the future. And a pattern is set is that Jesus Christ came to change the world. And through his disciples, that in fact happened. But that was about a relationship, a physical relationship with Jesus Christ. But the leadership of the church had to change from Jesus being present with the apostles, with the disciples, to the people believing in the risen Christ becoming the body of Christ. Not the body of Jesus, the body of Christ. And they did that through believing that the Spirit was leading them. Not only to move from one leader to another, but to be in situations which challenges had to be compromised, in which people, the apostles were led into strange foreign areas. They were given the ability to speak to those people in their, in their own, using their own uh, metaphors and stuff, their own language. They spoke to the Jews based on the Hebrew scriptures. They spoke to the Greeks based on uh, using Greek and, and based on the history of pagan religions, re, re, you know, connecting with them using their language. They were empowered by God, the Holy Spirit, to go out there and be the body of Christ, both in including others, the different people in them, into the body, and reaching out to others with God giving them the ability to do that. So I think that we still, I mean, 2,000 years later, it's probably a healthy thing for us to say that we're in the same spot. Every time we gather, we remember our tradition, um, even when we gather informally and not in, in liturgy in the church. We remember where we came from, Hebrew scriptures. We remember all that the church has done over the past 2,000 years. And yet sometimes... We want to say, God, do not leave us comfortless. Because we do feel lost. Sometimes with the challenges which surround us, sometimes they become so great that we really don't feel that connected to God as we did a week ago or something. Sometimes we feel fearful and scared and lost. And that's when we are called on to remember the tradition and call the Holy Spirit to be with us, to guide us, to love us, to give us strength, to reconnect, make the body of Christ reach out into the world and share this message. Of course, in the history of Christianity, um, in some places at least, this whole problem of it being a male dominated was solved by really lifting up, lifting up Mary, the mother of Jesus, as a significant part of the whole picture. But here we are on Mother's Day, and we're lifting up mothers. And it's a fascinating thing, the more you look at the Acts of the Apostles, there are a lot of women, a lot of women, play significant roles in that early church, and they're stated and listed in the Acts of the Apostles. It's been so interesting for us over the season of Easter to study the Acts of the Apostles and exactly to see how those early Christians led their lives and formed the church. May we today, in our own way, celebrate our past, live into the complexity of our present, and always, always call on God to be with us as we live into the future. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.